Section 6 1 Estimating with finite sums. Distance traveled. We know why a mathematician pondering motion problems might have been led to consider slopes of curves, but what do this, those same motion problems have to do with areas under the curves? Consider the following problem from a typical elementary school textbook. A train moves along a track at a steady rate of 75 miles per hour from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. What is the total distance traveled by the train? Well, we could take this function. We could say that uh, the speed is y equals 75, and we could graph that, and it'd just be this horizontal line at 75. Then, if we plotted from 7 to 9, this side of the rectangle, it'd form a rectangle. This would be 2, and this would be 75. So this is 2 hours, and this is 75 miles per hour. Now, when we multiply the two together, the hours cancel, and we are left with 150 miles that uh, the train traveled. Well, what if the speed is not uh, constant? What if the speed varies, and we go from 7 to 9 again? Well, instead of considering this, well, it's not a rectangle, but we can break this up into a whole bunch of little rectangles. We could take the area of those rectangles, and we could say, well, that's the distance traveled. Now, there certainly would be some error involved in this, but uh, what if instead of one, two, three, four, five, uh, maybe, I don't know, about eight or so triangles, what if instead of eight triangles, we did uh, eight million triangles? There would be very little error. Well, the calculus is going to take this to infinity, and it's going to actually get uh, the actual area under the curve, we call it, or the distance that the train traveled, even though uh, the speed is not constant, the speed varies. Example 1, finding distance traveled when velocity varies. A particle starts at x equals 0 and moves along the x-axis with velocity t squared for time t greater than equal to 0, where is the particle at t equals 3? So the speed is represented by the graph of t squared. So the speed is going to vary. So we don't have this nice shape where we could find the area under the curve. So we're going to cut this into three rectangles. And with three rectangles, there's certainly uh, there's going to be a lot of error involved. Now, if we wanted less errors, we just make more rectangles. So we want three, and we're doing left Riemann approximation method or left rectangular approximation method. And so we have these three bases of three rectangles. And uh, we want to raise this up until the left side hits the curve. Well, right, right away, the left side hits the curve on the first one. Let's raise the second one so that the left side hits. And then we're going to take this base, we're going to raise it up, until the left side hits, which is going to be about right there. Now we're going to use the area of these three rectangles to find the area under the curve, but there's certainly going to be lots of errors, and this is going to be definitely going to be an underestimate. Uh, we, now the, the bases are 1, so we have 1 times 0, or 1 times f of 0, which ends up being 0, plus 1 times uh, really f of 1, the height here is f of 1, which is 1 squared, which is 1. Remember, we're using t squared to find the heights of this. And then we have plus 1, that's the base, base is 1, and we have f of 2, which is 4. So we have 0 plus 1 plus 4, so we're estimating the area under the curve as 5. Well, what if we used MRAM, uh, midpoint rectangular approximation method? Now we're still going to use three rectangles, and so the base, are, the base is still going to be one, so we could factor a one out, and then we're going to raise this up until the middle of the rectangle hits the curve. So here's the second base, there's the middle, so we're going to raise this top, we're going to raise the rectangle up to that height right there, and then uh, we're going to go at 2.5, we're going to raise that up until uh, it hits right in the middle. So there's the third rectangle. Now, this is a pretty good estimation because we have an overestimate and we have a little bit of underestimate, a little bit of over and a little bit of under. Uh, so this seems like it's going to be a pretty accurate uh, reading for just three rectangles. Now, we want the height is going to be f of 0.5 and then f of 1.5 or 1.5 squared and then f of 2.5 squared. Uh, so we have 1 times uh, 0.25 and then plus, let's go 1.5, uh, I missed, 1.5 squared, and that's 2.25. And then we need uh, 2.5 squared, 2.5 squared.
squared, and that is 6.25. So we're, now we're estimating the area as, let's see, 2.5, we have 8.75. Now what about right rectangular approximation methods? So we're going to take the same three rectangles, 1, 2, Three, and we're going to raise those up and down until the right side hits the curve. So here's the right side. We're going to raise that up until the right side hits. There's the second rectangle. And then this third one is going to hit all the way up to 9. So here is the third rectangle. And this is clearly going to be an overestimate. There's way too much area for the rectangles. Uh, but remember, this is just an estimation. Uh, let's go with, uh, now the bases are all 1s. We have now, instead of 0 squared like we did over here with the left, we're starting with 1 squared, which is 1 plus. Then we have 2 squared, which is 4. And then we have 3 squared, which is 9. So we have uh, 13. Now we're estimating the area as 14. Now notice with left rectangular approximation method, we don't actually use the right endpoint. And with right uh, rectangular approximation method, we don't ever really use uh, the left endpoint. What if we did the same problem except with six partitions? And we're going to do left rectangular approximation methods. So this first one, the left side already hits the curve right at zero. And then we'll raise this up so that the left side hits. Left side of the third one hits. Left side of the fourth one. Here's the left side of uh, the fifth one. And then the left side of the sixth hits right here. So since we're using left rectangular approximation method, we never will use that three. Now, instead of the bases being one, now they're a half. So we, a ha we have a half times zero, and we could factor out this half since we're multiplying through. Uh, zero plus 0.5 squared is 0.25, and then one squared is one. And then 1.5 squared is 2.25. Uh, and then 2 squared is 4. 2.5 squared is 6.25. And, um, well, that's the last one. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rectangles. So we have 0.5 times. Let's add all those up. When we add them all up, we get 13.75. We're going to multiply by 0.5 or divide by 2. And we get... Uh, 6.875, so this right here was uh, 13.75. Graph the region defined by the graph of f of x equals 4x minus x squared in the x-axis from 0 to 4. We're going to partition 0 to 4 into 4 subintervals, and we're going to show the 4 rectangles that LRAM uses. So we have LRAM to approximate the area of R. Calculate the same values using RAM program, and we have that on our calculator. So let's split this into four rectangles using LRAM. So the left hits right away. That's right at zero. And then we're going to raise the second one, the second rectangle, until the left side hits, which is going to be up here at three. The third rectangle right here is going to raise this up to the left side hits right there up here at four. So this is the third rectangle, even though... Technically, the first one's not a rectangle at all, but it does have a height of zero. It's a rectangle with a height of zero. Now, the fourth one, we're going to raise the left side until we hit the curve. And right there, that is the fourth rectangle. Uh, so we're going to use these four rectangles to call that the area under the curve. Now, the bases are one, so we have one times zero. And we have one times three, one times four. And then this one right here is again a 1 times 3. Now notice on left RAM approximation, re left uh, rectangular approximation method, uh, we don't use the right endpoint. We only use the left one and then the middle ones. Now we're approximating this area as 4, 5, 6, 7, as 10 with LRAM with four rectangles. But now we're going to use the calculator to do this. And we have a program on here to calculate these. Now uh, we're going to clear this out, and uh, we're going to put in 4x, 4, 4x, right, minus uh, x squared, x squared. And uh, you don't really have to graph it or look at anything, just the program uses y1, so we're going to quit out of this. Let's clear it. Let's go to program, and one of the programs we have is RAM, and we enter again to run the program, and we're going from 0 to 4. And we have four subintervals or four rectangles. Uh, so let's see what the, the value should be. And, and here we have uh, the left was, it kind of went off the screen. Well, there it is right there. Left was 10. 
Now they want us to try this with 50. So you can just press enter again. We're going from zero to four and we're gonna go 50 rectangles. Now, sometimes this takes a while and through editing we will, oh, there it is. I don't have to edit this one, but I'll have to edit the 100 and 500. But now we have a, a 10.662. Let's enter again. We'll go from zero to four and now with 100 and, and I'll edit so you don't have to sit here and watch this little thing spin. We have 10.6656 and notice that all three, the left, the mid and the right are starting to converge to one value. And uh, let's finally, let's press enter, run the program again. We're going from zero to four and now we're going 500 sub intervals, 500 rectangles. I'll edit this out, uh, the timeout so you don't have to watch it spin. Now that did take the calculator quite a while to uh, calculate this, but notice that we are converging to a value of 10 and two thirds. And 10 and two thirds is the actual area under the curve of this shape from zero to four. Estimate the volume of a sphere. Estimate the volume of a sphere of radius four. Now notice uh, we have this equation of a circle to start out with. That's the equation of a circle with a radius of four. And we're, we're saying we're gonna rotate this around the x-axis, we're gonna create this sphere. But we're gonna cut it into uh, cylinders now, and the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, uh, where r is the radius, of course, and the radius is hitting the curve. So the radius is up to the curve, up to the curve, up to the curve. And so all the radii are following this half of the circle. Since the radii are following this half a circle, the volume now is equal to pi times the, the radius for each of these cylinders is going to be the square root of 16 minus x squared. The radius is going to be dependent on what x value we've picked. So now we have 16 minus x squared squared h. So the volume now is pi times 16 minus x squared times h. Well, we're going to go to y1 and we're going to type in, we're going to type in pi and 16 minus x squared. Uh, the program, the RAM program is going to take care of the heights for us because if we have 50 uh, cylinders, then uh, the, the heights are going to be tiny. If we have 5,000 cylinders, the height is going to change, and that's built into the program. So now all we have to do is quit out of this. We're going to press enter again. And remember, this program is going to use Y1, whatever is in Y1. And we're going from negative 4 to 4. And now we just have to pick enough subintervals that we're uh, satisfied that we have the correct answer. So let's just go, how about 100 rectangles, or in this case, 100 cylinders. Now, we weren't really told which one to use, so why don't we just use mid, and we're going to say that the volume is 268.096, and uh, that would be units cubed.